Hey, what's up my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan. And today, what in the heck are we going to do in this video? We are going to explain the use of chemical and physical properties in the historical development of the periodic table and use the modern periodic table to identify and explain the properties of chemical families, including the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, the halogens, the noble gases, and transition metals. Can you deal with that? Who, as always, breaking it down a little bit. First, we're going to talk a little about these guys named Mendeleev and Mosley and how they contributed to our understanding of the periodic table as we know and love it today. Two, numero dos. We are then going to explain how the periodic table was originally organized and compare the original organization to how it is organized today. And then numero three. We are going to relate the properties of the elements to the development of the periodic table. So lots to do, not a lot of time. Let's get started. Okay, so as you take a look at your screen, you are looking at the most beautiful thing ever created. The periodic table of the elements. So it turns out this Russian dude named Dmitry Mendeleev originally organized the periodic table, and he did so by atomic mass. And at the time, not all of the elements had been discovered. But based on how he organized them and the patterns that formed based on that organization, he was able to predict that there were some missing elements. And so as you take a look at this crazy Russian periodic table, it's actually not so crazy. I'm first gonna do a little switcheroo, and then a quick inversion, and in fact, we start to see sort of how this might look like a modern day periodic table. We've got hydrogen here, lithium sort of out of place, but then notice we've got beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, etc. And we're sort of following the periodic table as we know and love it today. Again, the power of the periodic table that Mendeleev began to explore by, orga by organizing the elements based on their properties, he noticed a series of patterns that developed. And when there was something that was missing in that pattern, he simply said, hmm, question mark, I think something goes here that we haven't quite discovered yet. Now, in addition to Mendeleev, you need to recognize that Henry Moseley helped to develop our modern periodic table by arranging the elements by atomic number instead of by atomic mass. So if you take a look at the modern periodic table of the elements, you'll notice that in fact, it is organized by atomic number. And when we organize it like that, we get these beautiful patterns that fall into place. Now, a couple quick notes about the periodic table. Each small square on the periodic table shows the name and basic information of a single element. Let's take a quick look at carbon, one of my favorite elements. You're gonna get things like element name, atomic number, element symbol, and of course, the mass number. Additionally, it's important to note that the vertical columns up and down on the periodic table are called groups or families. Again, groups or families, those vertical up and down columns. Now, just like groups that you hang out with or your family, elements that are in the same vertical column or group have similar properties. So for example, the elements in group seven all behave similarly. In group eight, they behave like one another. Additionally, you need to be aware that the horizontal rows or across are also known as periods. And if you recall, those periods or rows also represent main energy levels in the electron cloud. All right, so groups and families are just one way to begin to organize and classify elements on the periodic table. We're also gonna talk about a couple different general classifications, the first of which is metals. And metals are classified as elements that are good conductors of heat and electricity. In fact, metals make up the vast majority of the elements on the periodic table. They're colored here in yellow, orange, pink, and purple. So lots and lots of metals. And again, you're gonna encounter metals all over the place in your everyday lives. But we get things like wire, metal pots, appliances, bicycles, and of course, heavy metal. Important to note that most metals, that most metal elements are also lustrous or shiny, shine bright like a diamond. They are malleable and ductile. When we talk malleable, think bling. We are able to hammer metals into thin sheets. I like to think of 
typically the only metal that I can afford, aluminum foil. Malleable. Ductility, on the other hand, is the ability to be stretched into a fine wire. So a couple of important vocabulary words as you think about describing metals. All right, now let's begin to break down the different types of metal. The first classification of metals is the alkali metals, and these are a highly reactive metal group in group 1A, outlined here in this pale yellow color, from lithium all the way down to francium. Some important things that you need to be at least aware of now when it comes to the alkali metals, and we'll study more in depth as we move throughout the year. Know that they are going to form positively charged ions with a plus one charge due to the loss of a single valence electron. Two, they are going to form oxides by combining with oxygen. Their general formula will be X2O. More on that later. They'll form ionic bonds with nonmetals, creating salts like sodium chloride. They'll combine with hydroxide to form strong bases with a general formula of XOH. More on that later. And they will react violently with water to produce hydrogen gas, a very fun property of alkali metals. In addition to the alkali metals, we also have the alkaline earth metals, and these are your metals in group 2A. On the periodic table, these are your metals that are outlined here in this pale orange color. Some important properties of our alkaline earth metals is they're gonna form positively charged ions with plus two charge due to the loss of two valence electrons. They will also form oxides by combining with oxygen. However, their general formula is gonna be X, oh, not hugs and kisses. They will also form ionic bonds with metals creating salts. And they are also gonna combine with hydroxide to form strong bases. The general formula there, however, is gonna be XOH2. XO2. Then we get to our transition metals, which make up the vast majority of metals. These are between groups 2A and 3A. You can find them here on your periodic table. Sometimes these down at the bottom are referred to as your inner transition metals, that lanthanide and actinide series at the bottom. And although it's not explicitly mentioned in your notes, you do have a couple of other metals over here on the other side of the transition metals. Boom! Metals. Okay, switching gears. Non-metals, on the other hand, are classified as an element that is a poor conductor of heat and electricity. Notice there are far fewer non-metals shown here on this periodic table in yellows and light greens. Think about your non-metals, we get things like sulfur, carbon, carbon, phosphorus. Notice how these look very different from your metals. They tend to be brittle rather than malleable and ductile. So when you hammer on these suckers, watch out. Instead of making nice thin sheets, you're gonna break it into a bunch of pieces. Think peanut brittle, hmm. Tasty. Couple important subgroups of your nonmetals include your halogens. It's important to know that they are extremely reactive and we'll talk about why a little bit later. But your group seven halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, super reactive. Brings us to group eight, also a subgroup of the nonmetal elements known as the noble gases. These elements are relatively unreactive or inert. Nice vocab word there, inert. Noble gases, helium on down to radon. Important to note that hydrogen is usually classified as a non-metal, even though it's stuck over there with all the other metals. And the reason why it's placed over here is because it has just a single valence electron. Metalloids are those elements that have some characteristics of both metals and your nonmetals. They are highlighted here in blue, and notice they fall in between and separate the metals from your nonmetals. They make a nice staircase shape. They tend to be semiconductors of electricity and heat, so not as good as your metals, but definitely better than your nonmetals. And then lastly, don't forget about those seven diatomic elements. Have no fear of ice cold beverages or Brinkelhoff. You use the mnemonic device that works best for you. In other words, when they're by themselves, you should always expect to see them as H2, N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. U2, I2. Whew. Okay, so that is a very quick 
intro to the beautiful and magical periodic table of the elements. It's gonna be your best friend in this class. Get to know it really well. Brings us to a close for this video. Check out the links beneath the video. Have a fantastic day.